Hey, good afternoon class. So basically with epithelial tissue, we're going to continue talking about some examples and kind of where they are found in the body. So just remember with most of their names, they kind of follow this kind of two-part um, scheme. So you have either simple or stratified. Simple meaning one layer and stratified meaning two. All right, and just remember under all epithelial tissue, uh, there's a basement membrane below and that they form coverings. All right. um, the second part is um, their shape. So squamous, think of squamous are squashed, so they're kind of flattened. Um, cuboidal means that they're shaped like cubes. And columnar means they're shaped like columns, so they're uh, long. Usually their nucleuses are towards the bottom. All right. And they also often have cilia. Okay. So that is how most of them are classified. There's a couple exceptions, and we'll talk about those. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about is simple squamous epithelium. All right, simple squamous epithelium. All right, this has, they are flat, and it's one layer. All right, so here they kind of see that they're flattened like pancakes. All right, um, and they form, um, and the reason that they are kind of shaped this way is so that they form these very, um, uh, thin membranes for so different substances can diffuse through these uh, membranes. Uh, a lot of the time this is oxygen or carbon dioxide so they're going to be found in your capillaries which is where a lot of the gas exchange occurs in your body or in your alveoli in your lungs all right and this is also where carbon dioxide and oxygen will also pass through all right so they're very flat and thin um, layers. Okay. Next is simple cuboidal epithelium. All right. So simple, meaning they have one layer. Cuboidal meaning they shape like cubes, and epithelium is their lining. So it's a single layer of cube-shaped cells. So these are your cube-shaped cells. Okay. These are cube-shaped cells. So these two are two different ducts probably somewhere in your kidneys, all right? So these are two different layers, all right? And these are the layers that you're talking about. So this stuff over here and in the corners, that stuff's not actually epithelial tissue, that's connective tissue. And we'll talk about that more uh, tomorrow and uh, Monday. But what we're really looking at is these lining of these ducts. And this is where like um, urine will be kind of collected and stuff like that. So it kind of lines those ducts. So. Simple columnar epithelium, all right? So they are simple, one layer, and they are also columnar. So they are shaped like um, columns. So here, this is where the layers are, all right? See how they're a lot longer? And all their nuclei are kind of towards the bottom. They're closer to that basement membrane. And just remember that this stuff in the middle, this stuff is also connective tissue as well. We're really just looking at these darker pink cells, all right? Those are the the epithelium, the simple columnar epithelium. And they line the uterus and most of the organs in the digestive tract. And um, I'm not sure if you're able to see it here, but there might be some cilia on a lot of these things as well. And we'll talk about cilia. Suedo stratified uh, columnar epithelium. This is um, one of the kind of the exceptions that we're talking about. So suedo, uh, if you know what suedo means, it means false. So this is falsely stratified columnar epithelium. So what happens is, is that these nu their nucleuses are kind of at different points in the cells so that it kind of gives them the appearance that they are stratified. But they are actually just one layer. All right, so that's where they are falsely stratified. So they, that's where they get their name. So here you can look like, it almost looks like there's like four layers or something, but it's actually just really just one layer. So um, these line the passages of the respiratory system, and a lot of times there's also some goblet cells, and which we'll talk about, that are kind of interspersed in these things. But here you can actually really see the cilia. Uh, you can really see this little like pink membrane on top. Those are cilia. There's a little hair-like projection, so you can really see that really well in this picture. This is where the tissue goes, from about here to here. Um, below here, that is still connective tissue. That is connective tissue, okay? All right, so we're going to talk about goblet cells and cilia. These are some features of stratified and um, simple columnar epithelium. 
So goblet cells, if you know what a goblet is, it's kind of like a, a cup. All right. So think of them as maybe getting getting rid of liquid. So they secrete liquid called mucus, a protective fluid, onto tissue. All right. And that's what all these little purple things are, is that they are secreting this mucus onto these membranes. This acts as like a lubricant so that things don't get caught um, and kind of move uh, down the system. Um, it also helps protect the cells itself. They also help protect the cells itself. Okay, so you're going to find this like in your in your uh, nasal cavity, in your large intestines. So you're going to find it in a lot of different places in your body. We're also going to talk about cilia. Cilia are these little hair-like projections that come on top of a lot of the simple columnar and spatostratified columnar epithelial cells. All right, so they kind of capture some different things and they capture kind of mucus and they kind of help move it down past these different tracts and uh, upward and out of airways. So for example, you don't want to have a whole bunch of mucus stuck in your throat or in your nasal cavity or something like that because then you can't breathe. So that's what this cilia and goblet cells are kind of there to kind of help um, move particles along. And what a lot of mucus actually does is it, is it traps in dust and for bacteria, viruses, different things that you can get sick from, and it kind of helps protect your body that way. So that's why when you're sick, you create a lot of mucus. So, so we're going to talk about stratified squamous epithelium. This is tissue that is made of many different layers. All right, it's also flat. Um, the bottom layers are kind of where a lot of the mitosis happens. Remember that is um, cell division. Uh, this is where mitosis happens, and then these cells get pushed up, and as they get pushed up, they get more flat. All right. Usually they're a little bit more cube-shaped at the bottom, but um, at the top they are flat. They're almost like like pancakes. All right. This is your skin is the kind of biggest example. It also is in your mouth and your throat. And we're going to talk about a little bit about um, how this works when we talk about the integumentary system. All right. Especially with how our cells get keratinized and how we form skin. Like if you look at the skin on your hands, that is just dead skin cell. That is just dead cells. All right. They're only living towards the bottom, all right? So here, if you look at kind of where my mouse is, I think you can see that. Um, this is where kind of the layer occurs, all right? This would be the basement membrane kind of along here. So on the bottom, that is connective tissue, whereas on top, this is all the epithelial tissue. Stratified cuboidal epithelium. So stratified meaning multiple layers, cuboidal meaning they're shaped like cubes. This has two or three layers of cuboidal cells. And we're looking at this layer, kind of where my mouse is covering over. All right. And these are just multiple um, cuboidal shaped cells that kind of um, uh, line different types of ducts, like sweat glands and mammary glands and uh, your, your earwax glands, as well as your lumen. All right. So, all this other, like, lighter pink stuff, all right, all this lighter pink stuff is kind of in the back. That is all connective tissue still. Just remember, we're just looking at the lining. We're just looking at the lining of the epithelium. All right, that's what we're really looking at. All right, stratified columnar epithelium. This consists of a couple different layers, usually about two, maybe three layers of cells, in which the top ones are more columnar. All right, so they're long, elongated. They're actually, in the, in the bottom ones are more cuboidal, but um, there are columnar cells, so they are called stratified columnar epithelium. All right, they're in the male urethra and in parts of the pharynx. So the pharynx is kind of in the back of your throat. And this is probably where your basement membrane is going to be, right about there. All right, everything else below here is more of connective tissue. And this is up here, that's your epithelial, your stratified columnar epithelium. This is another one of the exceptions. This is transitional epithelium. All right, so transitional epithelium is, is it kind of goes from being um, squamous to being cuboidal, depending on how much pressure is, is on it, okay? So, for example, this is a lot of the time this is found in your bladder, in your ureters, your urethra, and basically a lot of things that like just contain urine. So what happens is, is that if there's a lot of liquid in that area, like in your bladder, for example, the, the tissues are going to be flattened. All right? They're going to be flattened up against the walls because there's a lot of force and a lot of liquid that is kind of uh, making them flat. 
Whereas if there's very little liquid or nothing at all, it's actually going to kind of bounce back. It's kind of like a sponge, all right? So you know, let me find a sponge real quick. So we got a sponge here. So if there is a whole bunch of pressure on this sponge, it's going to be flattened. That's right. It's going to be a little bit thinner. It's going to be squamous. Whereas if there's no pressure, it's going to kind of bounce back and be a little bit bigger. So it'll be more cuboidal. So that's just kind of how that works. So it transitions from squamous to cuboidal. That's kind of where you get the name. It's, it's stratified. But um, just kind of know um, just uh, changes in response to tension. That's usually from urine. All right. Glandular epithelium. epithelium uh, these are composed of cells that are specialized to produce and secrete substances into ducts or into body fluids. These are called glands. So this is your sweat glands um, you know, or different types of hormones are secreted into these uh, are created by glands. Um, a lot of the pancreatic juices or digestive juices in your body, like in your digestive tract, are actually secreted by like your pancreas or your liver, and those are also would be considered glands. So, those these this is the type of tissue that creates different substances that are used in the body for a variety of different purposes. And we'll spend a whole lot more time when we kind of in the digestive system and the endocrine system and the integumentary system about the the special types of glands that we're going to encounter. So the first one we're going to talk about is exocrine glands. All right, these secrete their products into ducts. All right, ducts, think of like an air duct as like a tube that open into some internal or external surface. The biggest example is sweat glands is one of them. If you look at your skin, all right, this is a model of skin. These little white things are sweat glands. Um, these little, I think these little purple things are, if I remember right, are scrobaceous glands. They kind of uh, secrete like some grease and oil onto your hairs to kind of keep them waterproof and pliable. So those are two different types of uh, exocrine glands. You also have some in your pancreas that secrete things into your digestive system and which helps you break down food. And lastly, you have your endocrine glands. Um, these secrete uh, products into tissues, into fluid or blood. A lot of the time this is your hormones. All right, so hormones are chemical signals that signal different things in your body. So um, ad adrenaline is one uh, that's on top of your, like it's secreted by your adrenal glands, which is on top of your kidney. All right, so they just secrete their products into fluid or blood. They do not use a duct. They just do it directly into the fluid or the blood. And we'll have a whole system where we talk about the endocrine glands and the endocrine system. And yeah. Anyway, that is... It. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, take care. Oh yeah, and we'll also have a lab over these, and we'll kind of look at them under the microscope. So it'll be another really, it'll be a really cool way. So that is it for epithelial tissues.